Hello, Todd Lewis here again from Mainline Dino. In this video, we're going to talk about setting up a ramp test and some of the options we have in that test screen. So to get to our ramp test screen from our dial screen, we press F2, or we can do it from the menu. We can go test, ramp test. Okay, so this is a typical ramp test screen. Uh, currently set up where we're showing power and torque down the bottom of the screen. In the middle, we've got a map sensor set up the top of the screen we've got AFR1 set up for example but uh, we'll first off cover what the ramp test screen actually does and and why we set up before a test so on a hub dyno we're effectively setting up the software where we're starting from a start axle speed going to an end axle speed and we use our derived RPM figure to help us uh, until we know what equivalent engine RPM our start and our end speeds were so to do this, we go to the setup button. There's a few little things here we need to choose, not too much. So it's not, not minutes and minutes of setup to, to do a ramp test. So basically we're setting up a, a start speed, which sort of arrow points to this area here, and an end speed, which is here. So we're doing a ramp. And effectively then we're setting a ramp rate, which is, it defines the acceleration rate of the test. So because I have got some derived RPM figure preset up in this program, as we change, the, the start speed goes up in increments of 50 axle RPM. So if we want to choose whatever particular start speed you want to, if I click on 600 axle RPM, that's going to give us an equivalent start speed of 2,070 RPM. And in this one here again, if we want to go to somewhere, as we change our end speed, we can see our and engine RPM figure changes. So you can just change that figure to something that you want to. I, su I suggest on an unknown car, have that higher than you effectively need to go. So you can always lift off or tap the space bar rather than going to a known endpoint here in the screen. So we'll set it for 1850 for this particular car. And you'll also notice over here, there's a grayed out, what's called a pre-start screen. So we do set the dynos up with a default pre-start of either 50 or 100 actual RPM lower. And all that is, that's just where the dyno holds the car at the beginning of the test. And then we don't plot data till the actual start speed we define. And all the, the difference between the pre-start and the start speed is it just allows the dyno to progress from a, a steady state condition to a ramping condition. It just gives us a nicer lead-in area to the, the start of the, the graph. Now, as far as ramp rates go, everybody asks what ramp rate should I use. Now, on a hub dyno, it's a little bit different to a roller dyno because roller dyno, you're predominantly changing ramp rates to help you with traction. But on a hub dyno, it's not the case. On a hub dyno, it's really just choosing the ramp rate to govern how long the test goes for. So if you'll notice down the, the bottom here, we've got a, a duration of the test. We've got 0 0.3 plus 6.9 equals 7.2. So what this is, the point 0.3 is the time it's going to take to go from the, the pre-start to the start speed and the 6.9 is du duration of the red area here which is going to be from 600 to 1850 giving us 7.2 seconds. So as we change our ramp rate this number here changes. So I know number I use when I'm testing dyno so if I click on 120 so typically the test we're doing I do is about 10.8 seconds when I'm testing dyno. So, so there's no be all to end all ramp rate you must use for any particular car. And predominantly, as you change ramp rates, you don't see too much change in the horsepower number. Any reason you normally would be, you're changing the inertial losses of the vehicle, which aren't as anywhere near as great on a hub dyno compared to a roller dyno. So on something you know, around four to 500 horsepower, you could be going anywhere from 100 to 200 axle RPM and you essentially get pretty much the same, same horsepower number. On a turbocharged car, as you change your ramp rate to a faster number, you, all you may do is shift the curve to the right where you'll just allow the turbo to spool a bit later. So that's why a lot of people ask, well, what ramp rate should I do when I'm now with the advent of everybody wanting to do eight or quarter mile simulations in the software. This is now where you just remember that ramp rate you're just using to set how long you want the test to go for. So, and these numbers here, which are 120 RPM per second, that's actual RPM per second. And because we've set our drive to RPM, it gives us an equivalent engine RPM value underneath that 
area as well. Um, at the moment on this vehicle I haven't set up what's called derived road speed so I'm not getting a equivalent uh, kilometers per hour per second but I can just cheat here a bit and put bang a number in that I, I know works for this car on the test header and once again on relatively slightly newer versions of the software if I just type a number in there that's 127 kilometers per hour per thousand axle rpm and go save when I come to this screen here now we'll see some equivalent uh, rear brakes which basically cross reference back to a roller dyno so so we've set up our, our start, our end speed, the ramp down rate, all it is is just in the, after the test that the software and the control system are ramping the car down to the finish speed and when the car gets down to the finish speed that's when what's called the brag numbers which are these big numbers here pop up and the data is processed. So it's not something you really ever need to change, I just have it set to a thousand. Now the reason what's happening in the background after a test is when we come to the end point and you, you lift off. The dyno is actually deaccelerating, so the control is actually ramping down. And what that does, it's there as a safety factor. So let's say you did a dyno test, you got to the end point here, you, and you've lifted off, but uh, say a throttle is a stick open, what, what the dyno will do, it actually deaccelerate the car all the way back down to the finish speed. So it allows you some time then to get uh, your nerves and turn the ignition key off shut the engine off so the dyno just doesn't drop load at the end of the test here very important to understand that so in the ramp to set up here there's a couple other things you can do we can do what's called uh, show derived rpm and you can notice what that does it it puts the numbers up in the bottom of the screen here so see how i've turned it off so it's only showing actual rpm now i suggest strongly that you always have show derived rpm on the screen so you can have a an indication of the engine RPM underneath the accelerator RPM speed. Other, there's another way you can end the test here rather than use uh, axle speed you can actually define a, an end speed based on engine RPM for example so if you go to trouble hooking up a taco lead you can end the test at a an own engine speed number so if I click on 6300 so what that would do there during this test if it gets to 6300 RPM before it gets to the end of the test, now theoretically should because at the mat mathematically the test will finish at 6380, the test will actually finish before that end point. So depends on, I, look, uh, experienced users, they don't use that, they sort of just used to using the program just by tapping the space bar at the end of a test or a known end point. But that, that function is there if you want to use it. Uh, display scale, this is where you tell the software predominantly down the bottom here. If you want to show both power and torque, they go power only, you go OK. You won't show the torque curve, so I go to setup, we'll go to space scale, so I'll turn both back on again. Now this is where there is an option here for auto scale after each test. I strongly suggest once again you don't use that function. I much prefer users to learn to basically scale the test from the get go. If you're not sure how much horsepower the car the car's gonna make, just Start conservatively, have it high. You can always change it after the, the test. You can change the scaling here on the left hand side of the screen. You can change the zero point so you don't have to start at zero. So if you want to do that, you can. It just depends on personal preference. Now you can always overwrite. So you've got so we've got some data on the screen here where this is obviously a slightly different car to one I've used. That currently we're set up to go to 1850 actual RPM, but whatever this car was we previously tested, it didn't go anywhere near that. So we can either, we've got some arrows on the screen here, so I can actually just change the, the test parameters here on the screen without having to go back to the setup screen. But because I've changed it here, it has updated this area here for us. Now, the newer version of the program uh, has added a couple of extra things. If I go colour these top two graphs now, the top two graphs have been visible up here for probably 15 years or so, but to turn these on and off, we just basically right click on the link in the black area anywhere. You'll notice there's a little checkbox here for top trace. If I scroll all the way to the top, I can, or I can clear all, I go OK, let's see what happens. So see how we've, we've turned off that top trace, so we've only got a map. If I right click again, we'll go to center trace, and go clear all. 
still okay. We just got back to one big, huge screen. Now, a lot of guys have their dyno set up for this if they're doing the predominantly, the majority of logging in their the tuning software, then they don't necessarily need to see a map or an AFR or anything at the top of the screen. So, if I want to turn it back on again, we just right click. I'll, get, I'll click on top trace. Now, this is user preference, but by default, the dyno show AFR1 there. And you can set what's called a, an overall scale. So I can set that to something like 10 to 15. And we can set a limit lines. I'll go OK. So see here, let's reset that, sorry. Top trace. I'll go 10 to 15, not 25. You notice here we've got some thin lines here, which are called the limit lines. So I can, if I want to, you can change them to whatever you have to be. So it's an NA car or something, and you want something to show me between 12 and 13. We can, we can do that. If I want to change the center trace, I want to put, say, boost manifold pressure and say manifold pressure 2 on, I can go OK. So here, what we can do is now, for the software for quite a number of years now, in these live screens, it will actually show you up to eight traces in these screens. So if we had a dyno that had a second AFR, we can right click and we can actually scroll down and turn on a second AFR channel and also so it'll plot two live AFR traces in that top screen. Likewise, you notice here I can right click and if we go to send a trace, I've got NFI pressure one and two turned on, so I'll actually plot two two traces live on the screen. Now you can just keep on adding channels to these. I regularly, for example, when we're testing one of our cars, we're getting Haltech CAN data into the software. We're also showing manifold pressure from an ECU in here as well, if you want to. So the guidelines are just there and the, the limit lines are just on the screen. So you don't have to concentrate on data. If the boost starts getting beyond that, you can just get off it. So that's what the limit lines are for. So to do a ramp test, it's just a matter of tapping the space bar and we get this green screen up on the thing. So what you would normally do here now, you notice in the background I've got, it says pre-start speed of 1898 engine RPM. So what you would do, that's actually 550 pixel speed. So you drive up to get in the gear, gonna do the testing, drive up and actually with a live run, you'll see a cursor come onto the screen and two little live balls representing power and torque. You would go full throttle at this point in time and then tap the space bar. And the program would, it'll plot a curve up the screen. And if it, you've set it up, you can go all the way to the end of the test here. And the program would actually stop the car. It actually deaccelerate. You'll feel the, if you feel, left your foot in it, you feel the car deaccelerate all the way down the bottom here. And then it'll pop up the brag numbers. Now, because I haven't done a legitimate test there, all the program done has popped up a figure of 44 horsepower, which is representative of the, that's the inertia of the dyno, that particular ramp rate. So that's what that comes up on top of the screen if you ever see that. So that's how you set up a ramp test. For advanced testing of here, if you wanted to set up to do, say, where you want to go through the gears of the car, all you've got to do, you leave the end speed the same, because not, that's not going to change. Or you can even go higher if you want to. But just bring the dyno down to a low a low speed. So depending on how we've got your setup, I generally sort of limit the dyno to not be operatable at between 200 or 150 axial RPM, because the retarders just don't have much grunt below that point in time. So there's no point trying to hold 1,000 horsepower at 50 axial RPM. The retarders just can't do it. So... If I had something like 250 here as our start speed, it'll hold the car at 200. And all we do now, just so we're trying to simulate now a, a, an eighth mile pass or something like that, and we want to simulate a 4.5 second pass, this is where we need a, a lot faster ramp rate. So if I go to 240, we've got 6.3 seconds. Now just once again, for this car here, say we want to rev it to say 7,000 RPM the end of the test or thereabouts you see here is still 7.7 7 .7 seconds so as I just change the ramp rate down to 4 point so using a lot faster ramp rate 
on a car when you're trying to simulate a quarter mile. So it might be something like this, 4.6 seconds. Actual test, but it's acquiring data is only going to be 4.5. So that's how we use the ramp rate to generate a simulation of an eighth or an eighth mile pass, for example. So, so that's why we basically just set your start speed, set your end speed, and you change the ramp rate to get our time we want. But uh, to change it back to if you're just doing a single gear pull, I want to end up somewhere around six and a half. I'll just go that. Go back to our, say, 600. And I want to bring that down to somewhere around that sort of thing. And, that's, and we're set to go. So that's a quick overview of the, the ramp test screen. Now, once you've done a, a ramp test, the save run button over here is, is active. So I can click on save run and the test header will pop up. Now this is where you might want to put a comment in here and just say, stop tune, something along those lines. And then you don't have to do that, but it's worthwhile to do that if you, this, the, the details in this box here are viewable elsewhere in the program, the loading runs and so, so after you've done a run, then we can just click save. The program's now waiting for us to do another test again. So that's a quick overview ramp test. We'll uh, see you next time. Thanks, bye.